All right, here we go. Um, we're going to uh, pick up right here. Everybody should uh, be able to flip forward in their notes to find this example. We're going to look at uh, these four examples of graphing sine and cosine functions. Should be able to be very straightforward today. Uh, actually, I think we're looking at about page three. Does that sound right, folks? About page three. Amplitude is the absolute value of A. That's what we talked about the other day. And the period is 2 pi divided by B. Okay, so amplitude, absolute value of A, period, 2 pi divided by B. That's the basis of what we talked about from Friday. That's given the function y is equal to a sine of bx, or y equals a cosine of bx. So whatever number is out front, we just take the absolute value of that. That's the amplitude. It means how high or low it goes. And then whatever number is in front of x, we take 2 pi and divide it by that. That tells us the period, how often it takes it to repeat. So, baby steps. What is the amplitude for the first one? Positive 1. Why? Because you take the absolute value. The amplitude will always be positive. Period. You take 2 pi and divide it by the number in front of x. What's the number in front of x? 1. And 2 pi divided by 1 is 2 pi. So what I do is I mark off positive 1, because that will be the highest it goes. And then negative 1, that will be the lowest that it goes. Mark off 2 pi. Yeah, 3 pi over 2, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I went, I went too fast through that. It won't. So I'll show you how to change them. So these are from the unit circle. Remember, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Pi is 180 degrees. 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees. And 2 pi is 360 degrees. So... On Friday, we talked about where sine started. Do you remember if sine started at the top or if it started at zero? Sine started at zero. So don't draw this whole thing, but we started there and then sine went up. And after it came all the way up, it came back down and crossed over. The next spot, it got to the bottom, and then it came back up. We've got the point one zero, we've got zero one, we've got negative one zero, and we've got zero negative 1, and you can see here, this is 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, and this is 2 pi. So, Soup had a very good question. Why does it take the shape that it does? Sine is the y value. So it starts at 0, then it goes up to 1, it comes back down to 0, then it drops to negative 1, then it comes back up to 0, and around and around and around it goes. Sine is the y value. That's your question? Very good. Great question. So, because other people were thinking it as well, if I just dot this graph, you can see 
That's the shape you get. Now, I, I didn't draw it bold because it's that's not the actual graph. It has a negative sign in front of it, so we're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay. The, you sure can, or you just draw the next one darker. Let's, let's try to predict what's going to happen now. If I move to the left, do you think I stay at zero or go up or down? I go down and then back to the middle, back to the top, back to the middle. Thank you. I appreciate the compliments. It's okay. I'll, I'll show you the types of graphs that are acceptable and types that are types that are not. But um, right now, this would be the graph if it was positive sine of x. But this one is negative. So it's flipped. So instead of heading up, it heads down. So I'm going to draw the real graph in blue here. Yep, that's the actual graph. Okay. So I think you guys have done a good job of identifying the amplitude of the period. Sine starts at zero, and then if it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? Let's sort through this one then. Anybody want to guess what the amplitude is here? It is 3. Anybody want to guess the period? 2 pi. So I'm going to mark off a maximum height of 3 and a minimum height of negative 3. Question? No, nope. thank you for asking the question. The period is 2 pi divided by b. B is the number that sits in front of x. And because x is 1, 2 pi divided by 1 is 2 pi. Thank you for asking that question. I'm going to mark off 2 pi. How many sections do I divide it into? Four. Do you remember why we do four? Because there's four quadrants. Very good. So as I divide in half, I get pi. So I divide pi in half, I get pi over 2. The third tick mark is always 3 times that first one. What's 3 times pi over 2? 3 pi over 2. Yeah. So we haven't really changed those yet, but we will. So do you remember the difference between sine and cosine from Friday? Yeah, so if we go back to uh, Soup's uh, question, sine was the y value, cosine's the x value. So cosine doesn't start at 0, cosine starts at 1. So it wants to start at 1. Well, look at the problem we have here. The, the problem we're given here, it's 3 times that. So it's going to start up at 3. So it starts at its maximum. Where does it go from there? Goes down. Bottoms out. Back up. Zelly, I'd be happy to answer that question. Can you ask that question again? Do you see how I was able to put the points? After you put the points down, connect them together with a wave. Do you see how we started up here? Cosine starts at the top or the bottom. And then after that, you just got to move through the cycle. So as I move to the right, I, I'm at the top. So I'm, gonna, I'm on my way back down. So I got to cross over the middle. Then I get to the bottom. Then I go back up. So middle, top. Middle, bottom, middle, top. Middle, bottom, middle, top. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth.
Two more. You guys are doing well. Amplitude. Four. Period. Two pi divided by what? Two pi divided by pi. What's two pi divided by pi? Two. So I can mark off four and negative four. And instead of marking off two pi, I'll mark off two. Two divided in half will be one. One divided in half will be a half. And then three of those ticks, tick marks would give me three over two. Three over two, very good. Yeah, so one half. Oh, you want for 1.5? 1.5 would be acceptable. All right, this one's different than the others. This one is sine. Where's it going to start? And is it going to start by going up or by going down? Why is it going to start by going up? Because it's positive. That's what sine does. So Zelly, if I start here, where's my next point going to be? Am I going to be up at 4 or down at negative 4? Yeah. Now I'm all the way at the top. If I'm at the top, I have to head back. I have to head back to the middle. Where do I go after that? All the way to the bottom. And then you head back up. I'm going to quick come around and I'm going to look at your. All right, last one, and then we'll let you start working. Where do I start? You guys lead it through. Amplitude is 2. Excellent. So I mark off 2 and negative 2. Great start. Now what do I do? How do I find the period? What is the number multiplying x? x over 3 is the same as what times x? Which one is it? Is it the one on the right or the one on the left? Which one? Yeah, x over 3 is like 1 third x. It's not 3x, right? It's 1 third x. So we take 2 pi and divide it by what? 1 third. I don't like to divide by 1 third. So instead I'm going to multiply by 3 over 1. And when you take 2 pi times 3 over 1, what do you get? 6 pi. So this period is 6 pi. So I mark off 6 pi. I'm going to divide it in half. What's 6 pi divided in half? 3 pi. Now I'm going to divide 3 pi in half. 1 and a half pi, or maybe just 3 pi over 2. Great. I've got 3 pi over 2, and I've got 3 pi. The third tick mark is always 3 of the first tick marks. 9 pi over 2. Very good. 4 and a half pi. I do the same thing in the reverse direction. How is cosine different in how it starts? It, yeah, it, cosine wants to start on top, but the negative creates a vertical reflection, so it starts on the bottom. So now where do I go? Middle, then top, then middle and bottom. And I kind of bounce back and forth there. Get my shape. 